Kirsten. Let's get down to details. Yes? What is it? The three new patients have arrived, Doctor. Get someone to show them around the clinic. I'll see them later. Yes, sir. Patients. Well, they do help to maintain our cover, sir. You're right. I'll see them as soon as we're finished here. All right. Turn out the light. This is the World Intelligence Network's HQ London. Weston's office, third floor. That's him. Shane Weston. Telescopic lens, 300 feet. Sam Louver. We think he's the contact. And who's that? We don't know his connection with W.I.N., but Louver spends a lot of time at his cottage. His name is McLean. Just how much do we know, sir? Very little. That's why I'm assigning you full time to Project 90. Our reference? Yes. And there's one thing we do know. W.I.N.'s code name, File 90. And it's something big. We want to know who or what File 90 contains. <laughs> Weston has left the office and the window is open. You can move in. Stop here. I want everything tidied up before I leave. Send that cable right away. No, wait. Uh, you better try to call Washington again first. And see if you can rustle up a cup of coffee, will you? Yes, sir. Perfect. They should find it in a day or so. But it may give us a lead. I think we can say Project 90 is off to a good start. Did he say anything else, Joe? No, Dad. Just said he knew you and kept asking questions. Harry Kennett. I'm sure I never met anyone with that name. What sort of questions did he ask you? Oh, what kind of work you did. Stuff like that. Hmm, I see. He asked me if I knew Sam Louver. Did he? And what did you say? I said, of course I did. And he went away. Dad, I reckon he was some sort of spy. A spy? Oh, I doubt it. Um, if you see this Mr. Kennett again, Joe, tell me straight away. All right, Dad. Can I go out in the garden now? Yes. Yes, all right.
Weston. Professor McLean, sir. Mr. Weston. Professor, how are you? I'm fine. I think there's uh, something you ought to know. Well, go ahead, Professor. Well, it's probably nothing, but... Joe was telling me about a man uh, who stopped him outside his school. Said his name was Harry Kennett. Harry Kennett? Yes. He was asking a lot of questions. I see. What, what kind of questions? Apparently about me and my work. He told Joe he knew me. But you don't know him? No, I'm certain of it. Well, you were right to tell me um, with um, you-know-what at the cottage. We'll check it out. I'd appreciate it. Listen, Professor, uh, Sam and I are going to take a short vacation. But we'll call into the cottage tomorrow morning to talk this over. Right. See you then. Hmm. When did this come through? About 3.30 this afternoon. The boy must have told his father about our little chat as soon as he got home. He couldn't be mixed up in this, could he? He can't be. He's just a child. Um, Weston and Luva are going to the cottage tomorrow. Right, I want that cottage covered completely. I want to be able to hear every word they say. Use directional microphones all around the outside, limpets on the windows, and the milk... How many pints do they take? According to Agent 6, two. Delivered at 7 a.m. Good. Get a miniature transmitter fitted to a couple of milk bottles and hire a boat. We'll use that as a monitoring point. We don't want to stay too long at the cottage, Sam. I'd like to make the midday ferry. A great idea of yours, Chief, to use a caravan. Yes. Wasn't bad, was it? Do you think Mac will let Joe come along? Well, we'll check with him when we get to the cottage. to three. Uh, Sam. Mr. Weston. Oh, hi, Mac. Come in. Uh, thank you, Professor. I hear you're off to the continent. Uh, yeah. Oh, just for a couple of days. Bring in four. Well, Mac, we've checked on your man outside the school. But from what we can pick up, he seemed harmless enough. Maybe you did know him once and have forgotten. It's possible, I suppose. I shouldn't have mentioned it. No, Professor, you were right. The big rat must remain a secret between the original four. Big rat? What does he mean? Quiet. Uh, where's Joe? In the kitchen. I want to ask him something. They're moving into the kitchen. Try six and seven. Hello, Joe. Hello, Uncle Sam. How would you like to come away for a few days with Mr. Weston and me? Can I really? If that gives you the okay. I'll take I... everything we've got back to the clinic tonight for analysis. I think we're on to something. <laughs> Come on, Joe, or we'll miss the boat. Uh, miss the boat. Uh, the ferry. <laughs> you get it, Sam? Yeah, yes, Chief, I get it. Bye, Dad. I'll take care of him, Mac. Bye, Sam. Bye, Bye Professor. Bye, Bye, Mac. Bye, Mr. Weston. Bye. Bye. Shall I play it back again, sir? I think four times is enough. Those Anglo-Saxon farewells begin to grate. And how that Weston, with his imbecilic puns, ever attained his position in world intelligence is beyond me. However, the reference to the big rat is most interesting. Have we any idea what they were referring to? It's obviously the initial letters of something. The computer has come up with a list of possibilities. Bearing in mind Professor McLean's electronic background, I take an educated guess at record and transfer for the second half. Record and transfer? But record and transfer what? That is what our next move will tell us. All right. Go and wake him up. All right, all right, I'm coming. an emergency. Open the door. There's been an accident. Oh, 
Over here. rifle of yours is most versatile, Kirsten. Does it fire anything else apart from listening devices and hypodermics? Just ordinary bullets. Well, I'm sure we won't be needing those. Oh. Oh, where am I? Our friend is trying to speak. Rather monosyllabic, but no doubt he will tell us more when the effect of the drug wears off. Like the secret of the big rat. Yes, like the secret of the big rat. Joe. Sure is, Uncle Sam. Uh, <laughs> come on, let's, let's, let's give it another try. All right. Yeah. I love to go wandering. Ah, Professor. How do you feel? Who are you? And what am I doing here? My name is Conrad Darota. And for the present, you are a guest at my clinic. A guest? I was brought here by force. My dear professor. We want information, and we will get it one way or another. My associate is so crude. Let me clarify the position. You were brought here as a patient. That is why your unusual attire was accepted by customs. Where's here? Dr. Dorota's clinic in the Alps, 6,000 feet above sea level. Very invigorating. There is only one way up and one way down. By cable car. And we control that. You are our patient. As long as we choose. The detector. A plane of some kind. Don't panic. It's only the mountain and rescue unit from the valley. Interesting detection gear. It's not radar. No. The interference from the mountains would be too great. It uses engine noise, amplified thousands of times. We can detect any aircraft approaching within 25 miles. Let's get on with it. My friend has a point. The information we require concerns the big rat. The big rat? Yes, Professor, don't tell us you've never heard of it. Oh, you mean the big rat. Brain, impulse, galvanoscope, record and transfer. A couple of more miles should do us, Sam. What do you think, Joe? That should just about be the right spot, Mr. Weston, if the wind's in the right direction. And uh, that's about all there is to tell you about, Big Rat. You take brain patterns and transfer them to your nine-year-old son, who then carries out dangerous assignments for W.I.N.? Are you trying to insult our intelligence? Professor, we know Weston has a top secret file. File 90. Oh, yes. The origin of Joe's code name. Joe 90. We have documents, photographs, tapes. You'll be surprised to hear the cottage and Weston's office were bugged. We heard every word you said. Yes, of course. You used miniature listening devices. Let me see. J152s on the windows, dart types in Weston's office and over the cottage door, wasn't it? And, uh, oh, yes, a rather inferior limpet 101 on the milk bottle. Oh, don't take it like that. The 101s weren't all that inferior. I don't understand. He seems to know everything. Leave this to me. You have attempted a very clever bluff, Professor. But you forget one thing. There is no possible escape from this clinic. You are our prisoner. On the contrary, Doctor. At this very moment, my son Joe will no doubt be on his way to rescue me. Here he comes.
There's nothing. No plane, no helijet. Did you check the cable car? Of course. It's at the top and the winch is locked off. No one can use it. Professor, you have been very foolish. Why not tell us the truth? I have, Doctor. You'll see. My son Joe will be here in about eight minutes. help is on its way. He must do. Get hold of yourself, Kirsten. Don't you see what he's trying to do? All right, Professor. You are going to talk. The Met boys were right about the wind direction, Sam. It's taking me right to the clinic. Fine, Joe. We'll arrange the reception committee for our two friends. Out. Wilson found this toy and installed it here. I don't want to use painful methods, Professor, but unless you change your ridiculous story and tell us about the big rat, I will have no alternative. Right. I use the big rat to give my son, Joe, brain pattern. Let me have him for five minutes, Doctor. Yes, Curson, he's beginning to annoy me, too. Maybe your particular brand of physical violence would be the answer. Start the drill. Right. This is your last chance. I have nothing more to say. about the big wretch. Hold it right there. I'm coming in. It's a boy. to the cable car. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I I'm fine. I'm afraid they're getting away. As planned. Yes, Joe. Just like we planned.
Rhoda, you are under arrest. I don't understand, Mr. Weston, world intelligence. Mr. Weston, what is the charge? Let's start with kidnapping. Kidnapping? I presume you have evidence of some kind? We've got enough. W.I.N. always have um, ways and means, rather better than your own. A miniature device was slipped in Curzon's passport as he passed through customs last night. You stupid fool. This is a section I particularly appreciate. I think four times is enough. Those Anglo-Saxon farewells begin to grate. And how that Western, with his imbecilic puns, ever attained his position in world intelligence is beyond me. Take them away, Sam. Bunch of amateurs. Bye, you two. See you in about 30 years. Are you, are you sure this thing's safe? Of course it is, Mr. Weston. I think we're going up a bit fast here, Joe. Joe, where are your glasses? I left them on the ground. You did what? Calm down, Mr. Weston. One of my many accomplishments is that I'm an expert balloonist. Joe used my brain pattern, remember? We're a little high, Professor. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you, you do know what you're doing. I mean, it's a long way down. It's a long way down. How do you get out of this thing? How do you put it in reverse? Thank <laughs> you.